everybody. I hope you're having a great spring. Um, I'm just so excited that I just see more people as the weather turns warmer, you know, just getting outside and being active. And right now, we're, a lot of people are prepping for the Lincoln Marathon, and a lot of my runners are asking me, Lori, what's a great um, warm-up or cool-down to do uh, before and after I work out or before and after I run? So I'm going to share with you guys some of the things that I do with my own personal workout before I before I go run or uh, before I go and do my workouts during the week. Um, if you look at research, they have found that it is much better to do more of a dynamic warm up um, before you work out and to do more of the traditional static stretching um, after you work out. And they found that athletes that actually did more of a dynamic warm up. Um, before they performed, they actually performed better and had less injury than people who did static stretching um, before they were before their workout or before their performance. So in PRI or when we run or we walk or we bike, whatever your passion might be doing, we like to do stuff forward. And so when we do stuff forward, sometimes that can get our back flat and our hip flexors on and our hamstrings and our glutes are not in an ideal position um, to help us to work. So but what I do with some of my own workout to make it dynamic is one of the things that I love to do is I will bend over and I'll put my fingers on my toes and I like to squat down, keep my weight, my knees and my elbows and I like to push up because this is starting to work to get my hips to extend and it's helping me not to extend with my back. So I'll squat down and I'll push and come back up, keeping my, toe, my fingers on my toes. And I will do this anywhere. You know, you can do whatever you want to do, but I'll do this for 20 or 30 seconds and do this two to three times. Then after I do that, I like to start doing like a lateral side to side movement. So I'll come over and I'll bring my left hand to help me to shift into my hip. So I'll come over here and bring my left hand to my um, right knee just to help get my hip, um, to help me get into my hip and moving from side to side. As I do my dynamic warm up, just slowly side to side this way to help get side to side movement. After I do this for a few seconds, then I'll start to move my hands to the opposite direction. So if I'm coming over here and I'm getting in my left hip, then I'll bring, my, I'll bring my left hand up and bring my right hand to my knee and go back and forth this way. So I'm getting my trunk to rotate as I'm moving my pelvis from side to side in the opposite way that they should. So first, my hand, when I'm going over to the right, I'll bring my left hand to get into my hip, bring my, left, my right hand over to my left knee to get into my hip, after I go side to side for a few reps, and I do opposite with my hand. So I'm still shifting into my hip, but now I'm gonna bring my right hand here to help my trunk go to the opposite direction. I hope that that makes sense. Then the um, third thing um, that I like to do with my dynamic warm up is I like to walk backwards. And so I'll take a step back with my left hand because I can spin and now we're running forward. So I'll take a step back and I'll reach forward with my left arm. I'll shift back on my left hip. Sometimes I will move my hands away from my arm and my leg, or sometimes I'll just take a step back and get back in my right hip, feel my whole foot on the floor on the right. Take a step back with my right arm on my left leg, shift into my left hip, feel my whole foot on my left leg, getting my weight, feel my whole left foot on the floor. And I'll walk backwards eight to 10 times and do that three to five sets. So I'll do like a five minute warm up, and that is my dynamic warm up. A lot of times we're doing high knees. Why would we want to get our hip flexors turned on? They already work. <laughs> they already work really well. So doing stuff retro or backwards is really good to get your hamstrings and your glutes engaged without getting your back and your hip flexors engaged. So those are the three things that I tend to do for my dynamic warm-up. Sometimes I might walk up the steps backwards, but I don't always have steps where I'm at. So those are the three things I most commonly do. After I'm done working out or running, um, I love to do um, a PRI squat. And so 
You can hang on to something sturdy if you need to, like a, a post, or you can hang on to a running buddy or something sturdy if you can. But you want to be able to keep your arms out in front of you, keep your bottom tucked, and you want to be able to squat all the way down, which may be hard for some people, so if you hang on to something sturdy and squat down, you want to be able to come down here. You can hang on your hands forward and hang on to a buddy. Keep weight through your heels, knees, and side of your elbows as you hold this position for 15 to 20 seconds. That helps to keep your medium down and get your pelvis to tuck back underneath you. See how I'm staying tucked as I push and come up. A lot of times people aren't able to do that without having something to hang on to to squat all the way down. And that's okay if you have to hang on to a kitchen sink or hang on to a running buddy or a sign. The second thing I like to do is kind of like a modified downward dog. So I'll get on the floor and I'll get on my hands and knees and tuck my bottom. And I'll bring my feet out um, behind me and I'll walk my feet to try to get my heels on the floor. Calves are one thing that do need to be stretched, but this will also give a gentle stretch to your whole backside in a healthy way. If you can't get your heels to the floor, do the best you can. Once I get in this position, I'll keep my heel on the floor, bring my right leg forward, and I'll hold this for 20 to 30 seconds. And then I'll put my right heel on the ground and bring my left leg forward and hold this for 20 or 30 seconds. And I'll do that three to five times. So I do the squat, I do the modified downward dog. Um, and those are the two things I tend to do after I'm done running. So I hope this helps you out. Have a great day.